Dangerous times. War on every corner. Fatal consequences. U.S. laser weapon, unstoppable microwave weapon, will beat Iran and China's drones. These are dangerous times. Powers of the world are no longer pretending to like each other. Their rivalry is as clear as day. War is on every corner of the seven seas, the U.S. a target in many of them. At this time, when the U.S. needs all the firepower it can get, it appears it doesn't have enough of it. Cheap drones and explosives have made sure of that by depleting million-dollar arsenals. The U.S. must now create an entirely new class of affordable weapons to win this war, because if the U.S. doesn't win this war, the consequences will be fatal. This new class of American weapons is known as the Microwave Directed Energy Weapon. Microwave Directed Energy Weapon. A microwave directed energy weapon is a weapon that, like a laser weapon, uses energy to cause temporary or permanent damage to targets. While a laser weapon uses light energy as its weapon of choice, a microwave weapon uses, well, microwave energy. The U.S. Navy has been developing both laser and microwave directed energy weapons, but recent sentiments have suggested that the microwave weapon may soon be prioritized. And there are reasons for this. 1. A microwave weapon is immune to the atmospheric effects that would quench the heat of a laser weapon. Factors like rain, vapor, the clouds, and so on have nothing on microwave energy. The microwave weapon can also attack an entire area at a time, as opposed to a single point like with a laser. This would come in handy against a swarm of targets, and cheap munitions such as drones do usually come in swarms. Then, there is the fact that a microwave weapon can produce very different graduated effects. This means that a single microwave weapon can offer a range of capabilities, including more subtle jamming-like functionality or more destructive effects like outright frying the systems, depending on which is desired at a point in time. Of course, the laser weapon has a farther range, but it appears the microwave weapon is far more lethal. For this reason, the U.S. Navy's Meteor Project is getting a literal boatload of attention. The Meteor Project aims to produce a microwave weapon capable of countering a wide range of threats aimed at U.S. forces, from drones all the way to ballistic missiles, and for longer too. Like other directed energy weapons, a microwave weapon also offers the benefits of a deep, somewhat unlimited magazine. Unlike traditional kinetic weapons, microwave weapons do not need to be physically reloaded with ammunition. They can theoretically keep firing for as long as they're connected to a power source. Then there is also the benefit of a low cost per shot, which is a game changer on its own. The rise of low cost yet highly effective offensive weapons in recent years has forced a worldwide hunt for even lower cost defensive responses to them. As it stands, the U.S. is forced to counter thousand dollar drones with million dollar missiles, a disproportion that threatens to significantly deplete the American arsenals. This disproportion cannot stand. It's even worse on the seas, as ships have very limited defense missile stockpiles and cannot be easily replenished, at least not until sailing back to base, which could be thousands of miles away. The bout between the U.S. Navy and the Houthi forces on the Red Sea is a prime example of this. In response to U.S.-backed Israel bombarding Gaza, the Houthis have been launching anti-ship cruise missiles, aerial kamikaze drones, explosive-laden uncrewed surface missiles, and explosive-laden underwater vehicles at U.S. forces for months. In response, the U.S. forces have had to respond with far costlier defense missiles. Then there is the threat of formidable hypersonic missiles from China, such as the DF-17. These missiles fly faster and more maneuverable than almost every missile before them. They are a new type of threat, one that current air defense missiles may not be able to handle, but new defenses just might. So when faced with the threats of formidable hypersonic missiles from China and low-cost offensive weapons from the Houthis, a microwave weapon could really be a savior. It would not only shoot down incoming threats, but also reserve kinetic air defense missiles for the large, critical threats they were created to handle. For these reasons and possibly more, the U.S. Navy has its eyes keenly set on operating a microwave weapon. The service requested over $9 million for the Meteor program in fiscal year 2025 and $13.5 million a year ago for the 2024 fiscal year, when the program was still named Red Cat. Whatever the reason for renaming the project remains unknown, but the program goal is the same. It's also the same goal in a fast-rising private company called Iperus. 
Iparis was founded in 2018 to enter the counter drone market. In 2020, the company unveiled Leonidas, a microwave weapon that generates powerful microwaves to destroy enemy assets, whether by disabling their internal electronics or simply burning them out. And thanks to the software that runs Leonidas, the weapon is able to discriminate between enemy and friendly aircraft, allowing it to take down enemy drones while enabling friendly ones to operate in the same vicinity. Leonidas underwent extensive tests in 2021. It used these tests to make quite a name for itself. The weapon shot down all 66 drone targets in the test. In some of the tests, the weapon shot down multiple drones at once, in one full sweep. On October 2021, Epirus and General Dynamics announced they were teaming to integrate Leonidas onto the Stryker vehicle to provide more short-range air defense. This attracted the eyes of the U.S. Army. On 23 January 2023, after the Leonidas outperformed six other similar systems, Epirus was awarded a $66.1 million contract by the Rapid Capabilities and Critical Technologies Office to deliver the Leonidas to the U.S. Army as part of the Indirect Fire Protection Capability High Power Microwave Program. Four prototypes are to be produced by 2024 and then transitioned to a program of record in 2025. Epirus announced on November 1, 2023 that the first prototype had been delivered. Leonidas may soon catch the eye of the U.S. Air Force, too. Epirus unveiled the Leonidas pod in February 2022, which can be carried by heavy-lift unmanned aerial vehicles, which the Air Force has no shortage of. It remains to be seen how Leonidas can be integrated with the U.S. Navy. However, should the weapon continue on the trajectory it is currently facing, it's only a matter of time before the Navy makes that call to Epirus. Until this call is made, however, and until the Meteor program yields some fruit, the Navy will have to stick with its powerful ballistic missiles. U.S. Navy's Powerful Ballistic Missiles Ballistic missiles are the ultimate weapon. Offense, defense, pretense, intense, they're always a top pick for the nations of the world developed enough to have them, including the United States, which boasts a large arsenal of them. Of all the American ballistic missiles there are, one stands out greatly for the U.S. Navy, the $3 million SM-6 missile. The SM-6, or Standard Missile 6, is a multi-mission missile capable of anti-air warfare, terminal ballistic missile defense, and anti-ship strike rolls. A jack of all trades, master of all weapon. Using a blast fragmentation warhead, this missile can intercept a wide range of targets within Earth's atmosphere. According to U.S. Navy Vice Admiral John Hill, the head of the U.S. Missile Defense Agency, the SM-6 is the only weapon in the country's arsenal at present that offers any ability to knock down highly maneuverable hypersonic threats, such as China's DF-17. There are a number of things that make the SM-6 the standout weapon that it is. For one, it combines the solid rocket booster and dual-thrust rocket motors of the SM-3 series, the airframe of the SM-2 series, and the seeker and nose cone of an advanced medium-range air-to-air missile. Thanks to this tri-brid nature, this missile is able to stand out from other missiles of the standard missile family. For instance, it is the only missile in the family to feature an active seeker for terminal guidance, which it adapted from the advanced medium-range air-to-air missile. The active seeker allows the missile to engage targets beyond the range of shipboard radars, which are limited by power output and the curvature of the Earth. This over-the-horizon intercept capability of the SM-6 is what makes it a key pillar of the Navy Integrated Fire Control Counter-Air concept. When integrated with other sensors through networks like the Cooperative Engagement Capability, an SM-6 can conduct engagements beyond the range of any prior air defense interceptor. And in 2016, it proved this. During a test, an SM-6 set a record for the longest range anti-air warfare engagement ever in U.S. Navy history. Going under the X-ray, the SM-6 is a 1.6-ton missile packing a 140-pound blast fragmentation warhead that detonates using a radar and contact fuse mechanism. Powered by a two-stage propulsion system, the missile can fly to an altitude greater than 110,000 feet, reaching space, and achieving really high speeds up to Mach 3.5 guided by inertial guidance combined with terminal active and semi-active radar homing an sm6 can strike with precision targets that are up to 230 miles away 
with all these capabilities on offer. It's easy to see why the microwave weapon from Meteor is unlikely to replace the SM6 in service, but instead complement it. Working together, the kinetic and directed energy defense systems could put an end to the unending threats against the U.S. From China's hypersonic missiles that are too advanced to be stopped by current air defenses to cheap Houthi drones that can be stopped with ease but come in such a high number that stopping them would cost the GDP of some countries, these are the challenges that the U.S.'s new air defenses must be equal to. To help them achieve this, the U.S. military asks that you give this video a like and subscribe to this channel. So do that now and thanks for watching.